Good morning. Welcome to the FTS Bet Slip on Tuesday, the seventh of April. Um, birthdays. I told you it's better than the old pop master Ken Bruce. Happy birthday, Kevin Kelly. Kevin, uh, West Ham fan. Been around FTS for about a year. Suggsy's good mate. Um, I've become good friends with Kevin. Lovely guy. Uh, and he is 52 today. He looks about 72, if I'm honest. I've seen him on a golf course, sweating and panting and lagging behind. Um, he is 52. He's currently going through a fitness regime, so let's see how that pans out for him. But um, happy birthday, Kevin. Other than West Ham, son, you're a top lad. Uh, I hope you have a lovely day with Kelly Kelly. Still not right, that name, is it? Kept your maiden name, Kells. You should have kept your maiden name. Kelly Kelly, but it's Kevin's birthday. As I say, I'm here for the next eight weeks. Whoever wants requests, let me know. Birthday request. What better way to have your birthday than be on the bet slip, see? It's the only way to be. Um, Boris in hospital, it's worrying, isn't it? Um, very worrying. Um, just, uh, uh, you know, I say it pretty much every day. Just incredible what people post on Twitter um, compared to in real life. I can't. I, I, are they like that in real life? Probably are, since seeing what we've got. But um, some horrific things posted last night. I, I, wishing death on another human being because you don't agree with them. Um, is quite unbelievable, isn't it? It is, it is quite unbelievable. Um, and I suppose it is just so easy to pick a phone up or iPad up or computer up and type something in um, and be a bit of a twat. Um, I would use stronger words, but I like to keep the old pod clean, as you know. I don't like a load of swearing on the pod, but um, I certainly, and I'm sure the majority of us, um, hope this turns out all right for him. Uh, absolutely horrific, particularly with a baby on the way. Um, it was quite interesting I, loads of people um, retweeting last night that fucking idiot Piers Morgan um, I think that says a lot about the state of the world when that guy's got however many 7 million, 8 million people who, who follow him and they obviously follow him a lot of them because they value his opinion or whatever um, but reading some of the tweets he was apparently sort of having a go at him in the morning Boris and then uh, all the sort of turn around and wishing well. The guy is an absolute parasite, Piers Morgan. A self-promoting parasite. And I do not know how anybody gives him the time of day. Um, I really don't. He is a dis another one. What I call a despicable human being. He is just a horrific individual. Um, I really, really somebody I really dislike. He's up there with old Farage. Bell end of the day. Let's relive. Let, let's bring it back. Bell end of the day. Piers Morgan. Um, how he gets on TV and people pay attention. As I say, seven million of seven million people around the world want to hear what he has to say. <coughs> Do me a favour. All oh, cough, cough again. Oh, steady. Um, that's me honey and lemon gone down the wrong way. Um, Right, what have we got for you today? Let's do the recipe. I'm looking after my vegan friends this week. This is a, a one I actually make myself. I love this dish. Um, uh, mushroom risotto. All vegan, vegetarian, whatever you want, nut-free, everything this is. Um, so you need some olive oil. You need, I use shallots, but you can use an onion, but I like shallots in this. Three cloves of garlic. Uh, I like to use a mix of mushrooms, so I get a small pack of button mushrooms, then some wild mushrooms, and I like a pack of dried mushrooms. The dried wild mushrooms that you rehydrate in water. Um, 100 grams of risotto rice, 400 ml of stock, and then I use the water from the mushrooms to make that up to 500 ml, half a teaspoon of, a tablespoon of white wine vinegar, and then some parsley and obviously seasoning. Um... So first things first is boil the kettle and soak the wild, the dried mushrooms if you're going to use them in about 100 ml of boiling water. Just put them in a, in a little shallow bowl, cereal bowl or something. Pour that over. Leave them for a good hour, hour and a half. You, just, you can put it in the fridge if you like when it's cooled down. Just lets the um, mushrooms rehydrate and then you'll end up with a nice mushroom stock out in that 100 ml, really intense mushroom stock. So do that first. And then we are good to go. Heat the oil in a large sort of frying pan first and add your shallots and your garlic uh, and a bit of olive oil and cook them on a medium heat uh, until they're soft. You don't want to colour them, just get them softening. Uh, then add 
all your mushrooms so go put the stock from the mushrooms drain that in with your vegetable stock so have 400 ml vegetable stock then drain in your mushroom stock just to make give you one liquid put those mushrooms in the pan put the button mushrooms in the pan and any other mushrooms if you're using chestnut or some wild ones just just a good mix of mushrooms adds to the flavor um, and cook those for another minute or two just to start softening the mushrooms up then get your risotto rice and put that in add your half a teaspoon of white wine vinegar and add two thirds of your stock. Uh, so about 300, 300 ml, 330 ml of your stock. Put that in and bring it to the boil slowly. Keep stirring it and let it simmer um, so that it's absorbing the rice. Um, from there, then obviously you want the, the rice to go nice and soft. I'm gonna have a knock at my door. Sorry about that, live broadcasting. Now I'm not going to go back and edit that out. Um, having a new screen, a new monitor delivered. I'm uh, expanding operations here um, while I'm doing all this Excel work. So I've I've got um, I've got three screens, and I use my iPad as an additional screen as well on my. But I'm now going four screens. So um, well, all good reasons, just more Excel detailed stuff. So, um, yeah, he's just delivered that. has to take a picture of you with the box now because you can't sign anything. Um, right, where was I? I was doing my risotto, wasn't I? Yes. Yeah, this is what it's all about, isn't it? Live, see? Live. Um, right, so we've put the... Yeah, so absorb the, the about two, two-thirds of your um, stock in. Stir in, simmer in. Turn the heat down low. Simmer it good 30 minutes. Keep an eye on it. Don't just walk away. And then test your rice. It should start to absorb all the water, go soft. If it isn't, add a bit more stock and just stir it in. Then that last bit, just stir it in until it completely absorbed. Test your rice, stir it in. It may may help to put um, just a bit, little bit more. I said 100 grams of rice, put like 105 in. And then you just got a couple when you're testing that um, you're going to take out. Once it's a nice texture al dente sort of texture you don't want it going to a mush then um, you're good to go serve it on a plate covered with your parsley um, the hard bit really is just keeping an eye on the rice the rest is as simple as anything just keep an eye on the rice stirring it in let it absorb the liquid test let it absorb the liquid test um, and obviously when you add the parsley a bit of salt and pepper you're off to go you're off and running there you go make yourself a very simple mushroom risotto i think it's one of those dishes people get scared of really easy as long as you keep an eye on it um book of the day book of the day i'm going to carry on on the sort of fiction route of true stories and things um well not no this is true stories not fiction um non-fiction rather um this is somebody i've actually met um and i know people very well who worked with him in his heyday um Enemy number one, the secrets of the UK's most feared professional punter, um, Patrick Veach. It's Patrick Veach's book. Patrick Veach was a renowned horse race gambler, um, took the bookies for millions, um, and then had some uh, colourful experiences with some uh, not very nice people after that, um, extortion cases and things like that. Um, it's a good book, worth a read if you're interested in punting. Um, and the one thing I think that it um, will is uh, attributes that I think I'm quite good at, and you know, I've got a bit of intelligence, but discipline and bloody um, uh, determination, I guess, would be the word. Um, so, yeah, so... Uh, Patrick Veach, um, enemy number one, the secrets of the UK's most feared professional punter. Um, there you go. Interesting read for people who like that sort of thing. That is the book of the day. Joke of the day comes from the curly one. So yeah, this is one that's been DM'd through Twitter. Um, joke of the day. Loves it. He's just happy that he's out. He's just happy that he's getting on board. Here we go. The amount of jokes about coronavirus has reached worrying numbers. Scientists claim we're in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> yes, it's not bad, son. It's not a bad one. Compared to some of the ones we had, I mean, the one yesterday, nonsense. That was not bad at all. Like it. A pandemic rolling in the aisles. Um, what else have we got? 
Oh, you want the stat of the day, don't you? Stat of the day. Tomorrow we've got our second guest appearance. We've got... Um, uh, you've heard me mention him, Gary Smith. Gary's fairly new to all this. Um, done some match betting, another one done good match betting, um, but fairly new to this side of things. So uh, going to have a chat with Gary tomorrow morning. Um, Liverpool fan. Well, that'll be interesting. Um, yeah, so, that, so that'll be what you've got to look forward to tomorrow. Um, stat of the day. Right, stat of the day. This is one to really avoid or one to um, think about more than a betting system. Um, just things that you find when you're doing things. Again, I like to, when people say st statements, I think you're probably gathering it, doesn't really matter what it's about. I'm one who likes to go and dig things up. Uh, and somebody told me back in the start of this season, we we'll talked about half-time scores, and obviously there's a few services that, that focus on laying half-time scores. It is a popular bet. We have our own version on Ultimate as well, um, which I've run for years. Um, and somebody said to me that, uh, well, I think I was talking about 1-1, one, one, and they told me 1-1 one, one can't win, but 1-0 uh, nil and 0-1 nil, win. And if you uh, particularly strong system, 1-0 or 0-1, nil, nil, if it's a top three side, and they didn't give me any leagues to this, they just said a top three side playing a team that's not in the top three. So on any day that... Um, whatever league, one of the sides is in the top three and they're playing a side that is non-top three and it's 1-0 nil or 0-1 nil at half-time, that is uh, a load of second-half goals, I think was their exact words. A load of second-half So, So you've got to run it, haven't you? Uh, so what I've done, I've had to sort of adapt it because obviously on the first game of the season, every team gets ranked as one. So I've done it that they've got to have played games. Um... So I set it at three games for the home team. Um, and uh, obviously then the away team will have played anyway. So that's that. So I've got no leagues here. I haven't bothered to go through and check leagues. So I've then set my uh, data to show me only teams that are in position one, two or three um, at that time. And this is back to 2017. And I've selected away teams that are not in positions one, two or three. So... From a data point of view, I'm happy that I'm recreating what I was told. I have then gone and set score lines at half time of 1 0 and 0 1. So I've got top three teams in the 28 leagues or 29 leagues, or whatever it is, covered by FDD. So a team playing top three, playing a non top three in any of those leagues with the half time score is 1 0 or 0 1. Um, and there are 1,005 instances of that, and you lose 57 points. Uh, so it's more complete and utter myth. So I thought, right, actually this does include all prices, and when you've got that, you're going to have some big prices in there, and there's a danger of you know a few big losers. So I thought, okay, let's set a reasonable figure. Um, let's set it less than equal six. So our max liability would be five points. Um, I don't think many people get comfortable going much over that. So I thought, right, let's do that. So we've got top three sides now playing sides that aren't in the top three. 29 leagues on FDD, 1-0 or 0-1 at half time. Half time price less than or equal six. Uh, and there's been 549 instances of that. And that loses 22 points. Um, so it's complete and utter myth. I actually tend to think that um, you'd be better the other way around because I think the prices inflate when it's a top three side, particularly at home or good side. You'd be talking the Bayern Munich's Barcelona because the perception is, well, they're going to score, they're going to score. Um, so again, it would be one of those things um, I would be steering well clear of um, getting involved in stuff like that. So that is the stat of the day. Top three sides playing non-top three sides. Half-time score 1-0 or 0-1 does not win any money and it is almost impossible to make it win money. Let's just go less than five. Less than five if we did that. Well, I've got the sheet up now. Oh, less than five is 324 bets for minus 34 points. So there's a little window there between five and six where it obviously wins a, a tiny amount. Um, five and six. 
he is there are sheets running yeah oh yeah wins here next to peanuts for 200 bits so there you go so do not get involved in games blind one nil nil one half time uh, top three side against a non top three side the market's pretty much got you by the nadgers so that's your stat of the day there you go i know you all want system system systems we got another 60 days of this chillax um right told you about gary i've done the recipe i've done the book um I've got nothing else. Um, I did have a couple of stories and I've forgotten all about them. And I don't know, I don't know let somebody let me know. Have I told the story about when I was eating chicken wings in Excalibur? I don't know. Let me know if anybody, if I've done that one. Um, we're going to revisit, probably revisit Kenny Dalgleish tomorrow. Um, but yes, um, I can't remember. I'd see, I'm useless. I've got to write things down. I've been busy. I've been really busy last two days. And I'll get my new office set up this morning now. And I will um, be back with you guys uh, with interview with Gary tomorrow. Have a lovely um, Tuesday. Stay safe. Stay indoors. And I'll be back with you tomorrow morning.